Why, hello there, my fellow base builders, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Vintage Story. Episode 96, Fresh New Kitchen. So although it's not necessarily efficient to do, I'm going to double fertilize the plots in the farm that have K depletion. Um, just so that it's more ready for flax when the growing temperature is right. So there was K depletion here. So up 120, K depletion there. So it's slowly releasing fertilizer um, into the soil, uh, bringing that, that um, potassium back up so that when it's time to plant flax here. So that I've now over fertilized everywhere that is K depleted. And I'm just going to save the rest of my potash uh, rather than spending it. Or actually, there might be other uh, K depleted um, spots on this side. Yeah, that's K depleted. Just to aid it a little bit. And then I could also bone meal everything else. This bone meal is uh, a lot less expensive. In fact, you can use stack potash and bone meal. Kim doesn't care about the stacking. Just to make sure, yeah, 0 0.24, 0 0.24. So it's um, still technically greenhouses. The seed temperatures. Uh, negative five, negative one, negative five, negative ten. So carrots probably too cold. Rye is negative twelve. Um, so the greenhouse raises it five degrees. So rye I can plant into the soil once it's consistently warmer than like negative, let's say sixteen-ish Celsius. Uh, I don't think we're at that point yet though, because it I think it drops the outside temperature drops below negative sixteen still pretty regularly, meaning it's it's really I, I would just be only uh, depleting the soil's um, fertility. and um, not actually getting rye grain from it. So I removed this, but now I'm putting it back. Actually, I can speed this up by taking a section here. not trying to use it on the health hammer. So I'm sticking bone in there. And then if this is the... Um, so bone meal uh, fertilizes uh, phosphates, P, and some N. So what I can do is anywhere that there is N depletion, I can add a little bit of bone meal. Bone meal barely does N but it doesn't hurt. And as you can see, the fertilizers stack. So like this plot here has had two uh, uh, potash and one bone meal. And you can see the, the slow release fertilizers stacking there. So if you had tons of bone meal, you could put bone meal everywhere, but there's only so much that the soil could benefit from extra uh, nitrogen and phosphates. So. Generally, I find it most useful to um, use fertilizer to replenish lost uh, nutrient levels rather than to over uh, go way over its max. All of the medium fertility soil, I can also just add bone meal once over to aid it a little bit. That will raise its phosphate levels because I know that however I organize the crops I might do um, flax on this column and then leave this one fallow and then do something that has phosphates and something that has nitrogens some sort of organization like that it's 
splitting our farm up into quarters. Wow, this is not grinding quick. Which means eventually, after four separate plantings, every single... Um, and truth be told, I should probably honestly be using the bone meal in permanent terra preta rather than the medium fertility because medium fertility is way more likely to be dug up and replaced at some point. But because bone meal is so cheap, it doesn't really matter. That's why I didn't use the uh, the potash on anything but terra preta because terra preta is kind of an, a permanent uh, thing that's going to be fertilized. Whereas the whereas um, the medium fertility is is uh, going to get removed at some point. But yeah, you're right. Um, it's not like I'm low on bones. Uh, let's do a little cooking. And see about one last priority. There's not a lot of time left in the stream, but um, I don't mind at least starting to embark on another project, if you guys want. Let's do a porridge of some sort. Oh, porridge can't use vegetables, though, can it? Maybe a uh, vegetable soup with grain in it, then. Okay, I don't even need a separate bucket, because I already know I don't have milk yet. So sad. I thought that would have worked. No, I guess soup doesn't use grain. Fine, onion soup. I could have veggies in porridge. Okay. Well, make it onion soup this time around. Right? Well, maybe not. Let's just preheat the thing and and uh, make some porridge. Where I'm gonna put this water? Empty? Yeah. Okay. Spelt porridge with mashed onion. Better. Thank you. Good tip. So, we have a bucket of milk from the f fussiest critter I have ever met. No, it could have been it could have been worse. Um and you guys are voting on the next project while I cover my terra preta in bone from the corpses of my kills. But it looks like we're going to be improving the kitchen. Um, so while I wait for the corn to grind up, the uh, the materials, the, the bone that I have, I'm going to start embarking on this already. So the idea that I had was to turn this into my kitchen. I realize it's currently a pond. Uh, but that will change and to give it like a nice view So everywhere where I'm um, shoveling I intend for it to become 
like uh, windows and walls and all that. So I'm going to change where the main entrance is. Um, it might be asymmetrical because I'm probably not going to make another double high door. Because uh, this one is a, a preset um, three high door. You know, I could do t well, well, yeah. It's probably going to be asymmetrical. As a result of the the doors that I have available to me. Are there hostile mobs? There are. There are hostile mobs. I think you um seen me kill some of them already. So initially, this, what I'm going to be working on now is just improving the kitchen, um, and we'll see how much time I end up having to uh, to you know like making a fruit press or something like that. Just topping up the steel. So 99 charcoal left, and we are two-thirds done with our steel. I kind of like two wide doors just because they're easier to use, but I, I could have it be um, split, I suppose. There. You all can decide. So, th under these barrels, currently, is um, brown bricks. And I'm going to be removing. I can't remove this brown brick until the, um, the contents are done. I, gotta, I don't want to disturb that. The clay oven can move. Eventually the corn will move, but right now it's it's grinding bone, so I'm gonna leave that alone. I do plan on um, replacing what is underneath this kitchen from water to... Uh... Oh look, I can actually see all the way down into my... Uh into the, uh, the basement there. It's gonna, the, the benefit of the window is gonna go bye-bye, but yeah, oh well. Maybe I'll do like a striped brick pattern. I'll see how that looks instead of um, what I've been doing now. Cause I'm gonna run out of brick at some point. But I kind of wanted like a very earthen, uh, an earthen kitchen feel to it. Can also on the edges put a uh, cobble because it's there it's going to be less visible because it will be underneath um, walling Or diving. Double door. Has one. All right, 
let's keep the remainder of the clay bricks. Uh, I'm not sure if red bricks, uh, clay slabs are going to look good as like a wall, though. I might not do those for walls. I, I don't think they would look attractive. And I, I think I want like a cozy, um, uh, sort of a cozy design kitchen. Because there's not a ton that you end up putting in kitchens, so I don't need it to be enormous. Again, at some point. Oh, this is weird. No, oh, I want to sink. At some point, I'll like fill all of this, but I'm not doing that now. Double door. And perhaps I put the double door here. Or we can put like a window, probably a taller window here. I should have grabbed my other glass, too. Now, in my opinion, there's not much point in having windows at, like, foot height. Because it's just too low to really get the view benefit. And in, the, in these spots, I'll chisel out um, the proper corner pieces. Or, like, window heights. So that's kind of the floor print a little bit. I will need chisels though. Um, this main window here is going to be the nicely leaded panes. Maybe I want it on the other side so I have a bit of a ledge. Oh, okay. The game's like, ha, but no. I would need a wrench for that. Fine. You win. Just do it as is. That's six of the panes. Hmm. I'm trying to think of a reasonable way to use the rest of these panes. I'm getting hungry. Maybe I'll have it be on the other side. So it's symmetrical. There. Let's have the kitchen go out. And uh, I need to stop and eat. At some point, this fire pit is obviously going to move. Fire pit is very vestigial, this, uh, this stage. Lots of trial and error. 
So maybe what we'll do in this corner here, let's just have it be like full stones for now. And as I get a, uh, more glass available, I can make changes to it. I'll do the same thing over here. I mean, these two corners here can become uh, bricked. This went out of here. <laughs> okay. That's kind of the front. This will have normal glass, um, not the leaded glass. And then these pieces can have, um, I don't know how much normal glass I have left. Maybe I need to check. So I have three and then I can cut some more. So I'll cut some more. I don't, uh, it might be quite some time until I, I bother, um, I bother fetching additional, uh, Galena for or uh, more leaded stuff. So I'll commit to all of my glass being panes. Because we have a remodeling to do. Should have grabbed my uh, chisel. So I'm just gonna have that be like a column. But uh, I, I, I like it. And then this is normal glass. I don't think. I mean, there's really not a benefit. At some point, I'll probably put um, uh, soil pathers everywhere in this section of the base until it, it serves a different purpose. But um, there's not a functional reason for the kitchen to actually be enclosed, like inside somewhere. So I'm going to want, I don't have a lot of um, fat for more axles, but I will want to drop this quarn down at least one height um, so that it's not like we oddly floating. And then uh, changing the, the bricks around as well. So for now, I'm going to have this be sort of fake full blocks, because I, I don't own the full blocks. I need to flip these. There we go. Completes the pattern. Okay. So far, so good. So if you can imagine all this being uh, soil pathing, but that's some sort of aesthetic choice later on. It does look a little ugly with the stone path that is above where at the forge, but not enough to bother me at all. So we've gotten the rest of the bone. Let's go ahead and drop this quarn down. I don't want to move the quarn that much further than where it is, because it's... it's um, 
it's annoying to have to axle it if it's any further than, than its current spot. And then we'll um, start to lay out buckets for and, and barrels for various things, you know, brining and, and cheese making and eh, everything else. So for now, I have one spare axle, but I'm going to want to make another axle at some point so that I can um, mechanize the health hammer or other things. So in terms of the layout, um, it makes sense to have a bread oven and a table adjacent to one another, probably on a surface. So I'm going to want some tables. Wooden tables, just a bunch of planks. And we already have walnut for the windows. So let's continue the walnut for uh, for other pieces of this as well. I'm just putting away some um, extra construction blocks that I don't need uh, cluttering up my inventory. So even, even these, um, I think we're done with the, the clay bricks at this point. I have a bunch of walnut. We can turn this walnut into planks. For a nice table. Oh, did I... I no, the barrel's on me. I don't think I put a barrel in a chest. Right? How's Vintage Story? It's, it's, it's fun, man. It's a lot of fun. So if I have a clay oven there, I know clay oven on a like a wooden table is a little weird. Uh, then maybe we, we maybe we remove that then. And I have brick there. I could even have it be, um, put like cobblestone underneath, uh, or, or brick. Yeah, let's do red brick underneath, right as I like grabbed all of my uh, materials out and surround it with tables. I, I kind of like the aesthetic of that. Oh, Jesus, I'm in a temporal storm, aren't I? Um, why didn't I get the message for that? It's a light temporal storm. But... That means... Whatever I was currently working on is probably gonna have to uh, take a back seat for a minute. Because there's some fighting to do. I don't have, um, I don't have, like, a panic room either. Oh, hello. I ought to go get my, um, my food and bandages. Because I don't know what kind of enemies are... Gonna come try to murder me. Unfortunately, oh Jesus, these drifters are tier three, and I'm sporting tier two armor, so they're punched through my armor pretty, 
pretty hard. They're higher level drifters than a lot of the drifters I've faced before. So they, uh... They're messing me up. Oh, and there's another one. Light temporal storm my butt. Oh, Jesus. What are you? Tainted? Is the draft out? Oh, man. The draft's always out. Draft likes to hang out. Let's try to find the draft. Oh, there he is. He is a tall boy. But I'm using the doors around the base. So if you're wondering why, like, I had doors inside of a base that is drifter proof, it's so that in the case, well, one is for temperature isolation, right? So that this is a, ooh, a rusted gear. So that this is a an actual um, greenhouse. But one of the other benefits is that um, I can close and lock doors behind me so that I don't have to face too many drifters at once uh, when I'm home for storms. I know that there's at least two down here. Oh, that one? Okay. That's a dangerous one. Come on. Come on through. Let's go. Oh, no. You're only level two. Level zeros, ones, and twos are fine. So the tainted, the surface, and the deeps are fine. It's the corrupted and higher, like this guy. Who super kills me quick. So I'm hurt. I'm back up and heal. Because I don't want to lose my nutrition. I can help it. Here's another three. When I have steel armor, these guys will be far less of a problem because my steel armor will protect me from that tier. But until I have steel armor, those guys are a menace. And they're going through my horse tail quick. But this um this temporal storm should be over pretty soon. Um my lemma armor my chest piece definitely took up way more of a beating than any other piece that I'm currently have on. Oh good, it's only a deep. Because again, the the tier uh, that's a tier three. Mm, Benny healing. The tier three pluses do a lot more damage to my armor than the tier ones and zeros. So if I have to fight them, I will, but I prefer not to. Oh, and we have another lamb. So we have, uh, we just got our second offspring. All right, you hurt me a lot, so even though you're higher level, I have a grudge. The higher level ones do have better gear, though. <laughs> you think there's three lamb? Well, right now, it's probably not the right time to count them. As the act of counting them and turning my back to corrupted drifters is going to get me killed. So we'll have to figure that out later. So I don't have any more horsetail poultices. I'm just used up the last that I had. This storm should be passing soon, though, I suspect. It's a light storm, so... Ought to be shorter. So I think I've already... Oh, there's two of them. Nope, nope. Forget it. <laughs> Not worth the HP. Coal's still pretty good. I could load uh, 12 in... Let's do that while we wait for the storm to go away. And in the surface settings, I do not have it that I can sleep. By default, you can't sleep through storms. So it's not like I can hop in bed and ignore these enemies. It's not allowed in the uh, the default standard server settings. Interestingly, uh, there was never any... Uh, 
Yeah, and they never spawned in here. just stood my ground. I'm trying to like joust it a little bit. There it goes. Why are they have tri transparent? Because um, they during a storm and I might be getting a little of the lore wrong, but basically during the storm the veil or threshold between me and the rust world is thin. So they're sort of they're sort of in the world and sort of not. They're like breaching the veil, if you will. So they're transparent because they don't belong here and they're here temporarily, in other words. There... So in terms of drifters, there are uh, two types of tier fours. One more dangerous than the other, but there aren't tier fives. Okay, and the storm is over. Um, so with the storm over... There still might be enemies in my uh, base that I need to clear out, but there won't be any new ones spawning. So this fight's gonna suck, because I know there's high level ones down here. You know what, it's, uh, you can have that room to yourself for now. So I need to heal. In fact, that's actually not a terrible idea. Is I just topped up the coal. And I'm topped up on food, so I'm just gonna rest to regen some health. And it will push the steel process along a little bit. So you can see my health going up as my uh, stamina bar goes down. And because I closed the door to my, my bedroom, uh, and it's illuminated, it's not like drifters can spawn on me or anything like that. So I didn't do a big kitchen redesign, but um, I think what I'll do is I'll put the bucket for cheese there and maybe pickling here, like along the edges. So the brining um, raw meat bucket or barrel will eventually get emptied. But I would like to start um, milking things again. So yeah, waiting them out, they have despawned. I would like to start milking things again, because we're going to probably want... Um, oh, I didn't mean to put that in there. We're probably going to want uh, a full barrel before I turn it into cheese. We don't need one, but it, uh, it kind of makes sense to do it that way. So I know I'm over time, but we'll give you a little bit extra. So we'll take this... Actually, well, maybe I'll move the barrel actually in the, um, in my cellar so that the milk that hasn't been curdled won't spoil. So I'll, I'll put this barrel in the corner there. I, I think that actually makes sense. Because it will keep it, the milk fresher giving me more time to acquire more milk for the, the cheese process, the curdling process. Oh, got no milk off there, but I do have double the attempts now. Just makes it a little bit more tolerable, I suppose. Will affects the next step of the cheese process? No. So the, the way that works is once you have milk, um, 
in a milk, you can have milk plus a pickled something equals curdled milk. And then you can take the curdled milk and create um, cottage cheese out of it by adding salt. And then your cottage cheese, you can... Uh, oh, it's weird that it's not... Uh, not linking to the recipe for cheese. But with the cottage cheese, you can take that and make uh, like uh, raw cheese. Where you take beeswax and, and the raw cheese that you've processed and then store it into to actual cheese. So it's a, it's, a, it's a longer process, but what that allows you to do, as you can see in the nutrition, fulfilling all five nutrition types gives you the most HP possible. Fruit, I'll be able to easily fulfill uh, back in springtime when um, there are fruiting bushes and trees outside. But, uh, but milk, I can't fulfill until... I mean, I could start drinking milk now, but I'd rather save my my dairy for right before big battles and in order to preserve the dairy right before big battles I need to uh, I need to f make cheese out of it or or something like that to be you know to be able to preserve it for longer but uh, the processing time doesn't take longer in um, in a, a cold storage but yeah battle cheese exactly and the later steps actually need to be in the cellar um, to make cheddar cheese or blue cheese. Blue cheese is a cellar that has a little bit of light and cheddar cheese is a cellar with no light would be the TLDR. So it actually serves a purpose to put it in a in a, a root cellar. So I, I know it's not much of a kitchen yet, uh, but... It's in process, I suppose. And I will do one last milk attempt and then chisel out that last pillar thing that I said I would do. And that will wrap it up. Oops. No, I'm sorry. I wanted to try to milk this one. Oh. Well, you, well, you're still pissed at me. I'm leaving. The still process, I'm gonna guess, 75. 83, mm, further than I thought. A lot of that is um, much thanks to the fact that I've been sleep accelerating time. Because steel does take a very long time, but if you uh, if you're doing a lot of sleeping, it uh, it gets moved along. The start of a kitchen, um, and in if I end up streaming this more, uh, we can of course uh, add fruit presses and stills and and. Uh, brining buckets and everything else that ought to belong around there to it. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm out of time, so let me hang up my tools. And at, uh, 83% complete with full coal loaded up and plenty of coal charcoal to see the process through this is where i am going to leave off thank you for tuning in to vintage story which originally streamed live on twitch february 15th if you have any feedback or questions for me let me know in the comments below but please keep in mind that for this series i've asked for no back seating so if you could respect that that would be great if you would like to join a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. 
If you'd like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. Hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Seraphs.